Yo, what's up? I've been away for quite a while, but I'm still playing the game. Just that I've been playing Overwatch a lot more recently. But um, yeah, the patch details just dropped, and there's a shit ton of stuff in these patch notes. Uh, first off, we're gonna get two new espers. One of them is gonna be completely free, but you can only get one copy of it. The summonable one is gonna be Elif or Inanna. Inna. In. <laughs> in Anna. <laughs> okay, never mind. I'm just gonna call her Elif. Is a fighter who ex uh, reaches her maximum damage potential when paired with espers that grant specific buffs. Ability 1 is very simple. This one deals damage to one enemy two times based on attack and inflicts sear. Ability 2 is at the start of a round, Elif enters. Uh, lion stance. If she gains attack up, crit rate up, or crit damage up while in lion stance, attacks with victory horn, triggers once per turn. And that's her ability 3. When she has contested territory, performs an assist attack with lion's roar after an any ally attacks. So she's gonna be probably very good for bossing contents, but it really depends on how she gets this uh, contested territory. So ability 3 deals damage to all enemies based on attack, inflicts defense down. And after ascension, attacks all enemies. If the target is the boss, dispels all of its buffs first, won't miss and can't be resisted, and then deals damage based on attack. Next, deals damage to all enemies based on attack and inflicts defense down. So she's gonna be uh, a really good DPS with defense down and seer with a very high uptime. Again, it really depends on how she gets this contested territory because uh, for, for her to be really good for bossing contests, she needs to gain this contested territory so that whenever ally attacks, she will also follow suit with her S1, right? Her resonance R1 is victory horn, final damage plus 10%. R2 is a new effect is added to Battle Fury, which is her, uh, her S2. Dealing damage inflicts extra true damage based on attack. R3, R4 is when at elemental advantage, increases damage. R6 is a new effect is added to Battle Fury. While in Lion Stance, performs an assist attack with Lion's Roar when an ally attacks. Alright, so Moro Yama or Yamato no Orochi is going to be a 5 star shimmer that you can fuse with a limited time, but you can only fuse one copy of him. Uh, it's a fighter who specializes in dealing single target damage. Ability 1 is inflicts disease and defense down on an enemy, gives damage to the enemy 3 times based on attack. Ability 2 is passive. If HP is above a certain percentage at the start of Moro Yama's turn, cast Snake Bite on the enemy and gains Inhibitor. Again, it doesn't say what inhibitor is. Snake bite is inflicts uh, sear on one enemy, deals damage to the enemy three times based on attack. Again, with defense down and also sear, very good for bossing contents. Ability three dispels buffs from one enemies, deals damage to them five times based on attack. If attack is above the enemies, increases final damage. Okay, so this increases final damage. We really need to take a look at it. How high it increases? If it's like double the damage and this skill does a lot of damage, then you might want to run R6 Chuyao with him in bossing contents. Because R6 uh, Chuyao also reduces the boss's uh, attack by 45%, right? At max stacks. So that way you can maybe have a higher attack than the boss, and you'll get this um, increased damage pretty much every single time. And then his ascension, killing the target resets ability cooldown. Probably gonna be good in PvP as well. Uh, we'll have to see. He doesn't have any, you know, cheat death mechanics, so he's gonna be a glass cannon. You probably want to run him in a team that has, um, that is going first. His R1 is before an ally takes action, increases his AP, triggers once per battle. I don't know if this is a, a typo or not. Increases once per battle is kind of weak for an R1, but who knows. Uh, R2 gains attack out before casting Abyssal Salvo. Upon killing the target, gains a bonus turn, tri again triggers once per battle. I don't know if this is once per battle or once per per turn. R4 is when taking lethal damage for the first time, prevents himself from dying and recovers HP. Gains Warrior Reborn, triggers once per battle again. Since uh, R4 gives him a cheat death mechanic, so this is where you want him to be at for PvP. Uh, again, we don't know what this Warrior Reborn is. It doesn't say what it is uh, in here. We'll have to wait for the PTR server. And then R6 is when any unit falls, increases his AP, immune to AP down. His R6 is kind of okay because his R2 already gives him uh, gives him a bonus turn, right? When he casts his S3, he kills someone. He gives he gains a bonus turn. He doesn't really need the, the AP up. I mean, it's useful, but not really game-changing in my, in my opinion. This immune to AP down is uh, very good though. And you can get him from 
limited time as per fusion and also echo after the update. So new feature, limited time as per fusion, it will be up from 6th of August to 16th of September, so a little over one month. So for the upgrade requirements for the Espers, you need to have um, Yuhime, so it's not completely free. If you don't have a Yuhime, you might want to grab an uh, R0 Yuhime just to get this guy for free. Again, he's okay in my opinion at R0, but he's a free streamer, right? Uh, so you spend 100 wish stones to get Yuhime, and also Yuhime is getting buffed as well. I don't know what the buff is. I just saw like some balance changes for Yuhime. You just get Yuhime, and then if you have Yamato, if you don't have Yamato, you probably want to skip him. Um, but Yamato is going to be up for the next championship event. So uh, if you can get Yamato from there, and then you get Yuhime from wish stones, then you can get him for free. So what you need is you need Yuhime and Yamato to uh, level 60 and maximum essential uh, level, and also some ability level as well. And then you fuse them all together, but keep in mind, when you fuse them all together, they will not be consumed right here. The Espers themselves and other upgrades will not be consumed. So don't be worried that your Yuime or Yamato will be removed from your account. They will not, they will just act as a fusion and then you'll get Morayama for free while Yuhime and Yamato just stays in your account, right? Yeah, that's that for the Esper Fusion. And this one is also a very big change, Union Dividends. Uh, considering that you may not have the energy to participate in each arena, we are introducing the Union Dividends feature. Whether you're a top player in PvP or PvE battles, your efforts will earn you the same daily rewards. Uh, the system includes two types of trophy rewards, basic trophy, Beatbout daily rewards are now basic trophy rewards. These rewards will no longer be sent separately. Instead, they will be shared with Point War. The system will automatically select your higher rank in Beatbout or Point War uh, on your server for daily reward calculation. So, if you do well in Beatbout, for example, and you get like top 1%, or maybe top 200, right? You get top 200, but your Point War, you get worse. Maybe you are... Um, Point War Tier 16. So you get less daily, daily rewards from here, right? It doesn't matter anymore because it will use your Beatbout score, which is your top 200 score, to get your daily rewards. So your ranking for Point War does not matter anymore. So if you only want to focus on Beatbout, you can just focus on Beatbout. Your Point War, you can just let it rot for, for pretty much forever, I think, is what it's saying. And that's for the basic trophy. For the incentive trophy, Knockout daily rewards are now incentive trophy rewards. These rewards will no longer be sent separately. Instead, they will be shared with Ritual Miracle Challenge. In other words, Miracle Challenge is going to be your ultimate spire. This one. Uh, where is it? There it is. This one. The system will again automatically select your higher rank in Knockout or Miracle Challenge in your division for daily reward calculation. So if you do well in Knockout, you don't really need to do well in Miracle Challenge per se. At least that's what I'm getting at from this uh, text right here. So if you do well in Knockout, you don't really need to focus on Miracle Challenge. And if you do well in Miracle Challenge, you don't really need to focus on Knockout anymore. Again, I don't know whether it's best to just focus on Knockout or for uh, Ritual Miracle. Because again, when you focus on uh, Miracle Challenge, you need to focus on all 8 of the bosses. Whereas for Knockout, you just need to focus on PvP, right? But we'll have to see. Okay, so warm up event is going to be back. It's going to be up for about 2 weeks, I think. 3 weeks. Yeah, 3 weeks. All participating experts will have their level star rating ascension fa uh, phase set to max by the system while using their own equipment, so no longer rival runes. The system will provide 5 different powerful experts each day to assist in battles. Very good. You can preview available helpers experts for each day of the event via the assist calendar. Uh, new rules are introduced for platinum and higher tiers. In addition to the extra rule of vetoing one opponent's Esper, players cannot select duplicate Espers during the selection phase. It's time to demonstrate your quick thing. Oh my god. It's gonna be who <laughs> who gets to pick R6 Daji first wins. <laughs> who gets to pick R6 Daji plus Chu Yao is gonna win the entire game. Cause like if you can't duplicate Espers anymore, the the first pick player is going to win by 
uh, a huge mile. Because right now there's a handful of espers that is just a cheat code for PvP. Uh, you have R6 Daji, you have Momo, uh, plus Chu Yao. Even Ana is extremely good in warm up event. So, yeah, the first pick player is gonna win by a, a long shot. Okay, this one is nice. Uh, regardless of battle results, each match grants Summer Pass XP, so you don't need to win. You Even if you lose, you will still gain a XP for the Summer Pass. Okay, so this time around, you need to play the warm-up event in order for you to get Yamato no Orochi, the new 5-star Shimmer, because when you traverse through the tiers, you will get main wave for him. Alright, for the team show, they're changing the loyalty chest once again. Now it's going to be loyalty chest 3. Um, so it contains Yun Chuan? Hey yo, they're cooking! No way! Okay, okay! Yun Chuan, Tang Shuan, and Liling is troll. Gabriel is also kind of troll for most people at this point. Clara, Sienna, Zora, Brewster, Ife. <laughs> so for most players, you definitely want to go for Yun Chuan. If you don't have him at R2, 100%, 110%, you want to go for Yun Chuan. If you already have him at R2, it might be worth it to go for his R5. You don't need to, to go to R6. Uh, just R5 to get him a little bit more damage. But if you even if you don't want to get him to R5, it's totally understandable. Um, the next one is going to be Brewster. And then maybe Sienna. Sienna is really good right now for um, PvP. You have like three choices that is very good. Yun Chuan, Brewster and Sienna. The rest... You can even go for Ife. Uh, Ife R6 is pretty good. Alright, so Battle Redux is also going to be back, which means we're also going to be getting um, Loyalty Chest 3 Divinite Packs. Let's go! So, it's going to be the same as this one. Um, Yuntron's Divinite is not that good. Again, it really depends on your team, but if you run Yuntron plus Embla, you don't you want Yuntron to have the Divinite. Because when he has the Divinite, he gets attacked up at the start of the, uh, the battle. And then Liam or Chu Yao's buff will actually go to Yun Chuan instead of your Embla. So keep that in mind. Tang Shuan's Divinate, Li Ling's Divinate is kind of a skip. Gabrielle's Divinate is pretty good for PvP. She gains immunity at the start of the battle. I might actually go for hers. Clara's Divinate is whatever. Sienna's Divinate is pretty good. Um, Zora's Divinate is also whatever. Brewster, actually I might go for Brewster just for more damage. Um, and then if it is uh, kind of whatever as well. Alright, so limited time featured Echo is insane. <laughs> the first stage is going to be Elif, Yuhime and Farah. I have not taken a look at the Yuhime's buff yet. I don't know if she's worth it uh, right now. But Farah at this point, I would say she's escaped. Uh, Elif and Chu Yao. Chu Yao is back. Isn't that crazy? Chu Yao is a new Esper and he's already back as a rerun. So if you want to get him to R6, this is probably going to be the best time to get him to R6 because Elif, in my opinion, she her, her kit kind of seems a little bit underwhelming unless it, it really depends on her buff, how she gets it. If she gets it pretty easily and throughout the fight, then she's going to be one of the best units for PvE bossing contents. Uh, but Chu Yao has been proven to be probably one of the most busted uh, PvE and PvP as per support. So if you want to go for Chuya, 100% he's worth it. Abigail, at this point, I don't think even the buff is not really doing much for her. I use her for, uh, I think, Forbitter, and that's about it. Uh, nothing else. For PvP, I do use her because uh, I have her at high Divinit and also high Resonance. And at stage 3, we have Elif, Valeria, and Liam. <laughs> Dude, look at this. Chuya plus Liam. I don't even know who I want to go for. I probably want to go for... R6 Liam? I Again, I don't really know. If I go for R6 to Yao, my, my wish stones is down, down the drain. Okay, so championship is going to be back and it's going to be for Yamato, no longer for Momo. You can, I think, uh, exchange the Yamato fragments for Momo. Um, and then also Yamato is getting a, a change as well. I don't know if it's a buff or what. Um, yeah, I think this championship is going to be the same as the last one. Boom Boom Gacha is going to be back, Treasure Kingdom, Golden City Challenge. Bootleg Market again, bro. Every single update, they've been bringing it back, uh, Bootleg Market. But it's only up for a week, so keep that in mind. Save your Nexus Crystals for this one. Alice Magic Heart, Scratch Off. Alright, so this one, Adjustments and Improvements. Membership cost for Blitz at high ratings in Desolate Lands has been reduced. This is huge. 
because right now um, for you to blitz like hard mode it's like 18 memo chips or is it 15 I think it's 15 which is crazy new products have been added to club shop which can be viewed in game after the update okay I think I'll keep the as well balance adjustment in the next video because I rambled on for way too long the video was around like an hour but yeah this update is super stacked um, we're getting a few free stuff again new espers you're getting you can get yunshuan for free you can get his divinate for free uh you can also get the new shimmer net 5 for free uh for one copy and um yeah a bunch of other stuff as well you can either focus on pve or pvp if you want to at this point because they give the same amount of daily rewards this update is going to be huge for every player at this point because uh back then if you were a pve player you kind of get shafted because you focus on PvP all this time while not getting a, a good amount of rewards, right? Now you'll get uh, the same amount of rewards that uh, PvP players would get. So, yeah. The new Shimmer Net 5 seems okay at R0. He kind of needs his resonance, I think. Um, Elif looks pretty good for bossing contents, but I wouldn't say she's game breaking unless this contested territory is 100% uh, uptime. Uh, we'll see in the PTR server though. They've been one-upping every single update at this point, which is uh, crazy. Yeah, kudos to Lilith. That's about it, ciao.